The Guitar Masters Open 2014, played between November 25th and December 5th, 2014. The strongest rated open tournament ever, it's my understanding, in the history of the world. Huge, huge field. Uh, former world champions, dozens and dozens of GMs all over the world. Uh, South America, United States, Europe, uh, even the, all the big players in Russia, including Vladimir Kramnik, Maxime Vichet Lagraf, uh, big players from China, you name it. It's a great tournament. Don't miss any of the action. Game's coming up. And here are the final standings for Akhtar Masters Open 2014. Won by Yang Yi Yu from China with seven and a half points. Second place. Anish Gary and Kramnik in third place. Kramnik got third place on tie breaks. Quite a field here. Number seven, Salam from United Arab Emirates. Played a great, great game. You can see on the right there. It's almost 200 points above his rating. Wang Yi Yu, who won it, played over 2,900 points, rating points in performance rating. Absolutely amazing. Vashela Graf, ninth. John Vesesky, a world-class player. And I also want to mention my buddy, Sammy Shanklin, got 11, 11th place, did really well, over 2,700 performance rating, real proud of him, got six points out of nine, great showing for Sammy, Sammy, I tell you, really does his homework, he comes well prepared, and you see the rest of the field, Mosesian, Akopian, and all the rest, great, great field, great tournament, congratulations to Yang Yi Yu from China. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Round 9, the last round of the Guitar Masters Open 2014. This is a hell of a game, folks. A Copian as white. Not a Copian, but a Copian. And Anish Giri is black. If you remember, Anish won the first six rounds in a row. And then lost the next two, rounds 7 and 8. And he lost to Kramnik. You're going to see that in a later game. Kramnik and Huanning Yu from China battle it out for first place. Anyway, let's get to it. Copian's white. Geary is black. It's a hell of a game, folks. Hell of a game. I also want to mention, beginning my video here, I'd appreciate it if a lot of my viewers would subscribe. I would personally appreciate it. I've gotten a lot of subscribers in the last couple of months, and uh, I'd appreciate it if you all would subscribe. Thank you. Knight F3, E6, D4, Typical, we'll go through it here. A6, Queen D2, White's getting ready to cancel. Knight F6, and of course, Castle Long. Probably going to have opposite side castling, we'll have to see. Bishop B4, F3, typical. Has to guard this pawn on E4. If Bishop takes, Queen takes, and Knight takes here. So you got to reinforce your only center pawn. In fact, it is the only center pawn on the board. Knight e5. Computer likes queen to e1. But who's going to move the queen again, honestly? And who would move it to e1? And in all fairness. g4 is a good move. A copian decides to go knight to b3, which I like a lot. It helps with the defense of the king. You have these three pawns. These two knights, queen. All in defense of the king. b5. King to b1. Call that a grandmaster move. The computer liked a3, though. And after the bishop to e7. That was the computer's choice. After king b1, what I call a grandmaster move. Bishop comes back to e7. He wasn't so much retreating the bishop, but I think it is. He's clearing the way for the pawns to come down. Knight to c4 was worth looking at. Then after b takes... Pawn takes a3, and then it gets really crazy after that. End up with triple pawns on the b file. Who wants that? Bishop b7, queen f2. Like that move a lot. Gets the rook on the open file. And also have the queen bishop battery here. Bishop b7 by Anish. Bishop goes to b6, queen goes to b8, which is interesting. Now, that's the computer's choice as well. I would have thought c8 would be better, 
but it blocks in the rook, but the queen on b8 blocks in the rook too. So I think I would have played c8, but that's just me. Queen to b8, bishop d4, hitting the knight. d6. Why well, would reinforce that? I really don't know. Bishop takes, d pawn takes, doubles up the pawns. We'll have to see how it works out. G4, here come the pawns, finally. We're on move 15. Black hasn't castled yet. And we're on G4. Should have happened long before this. B4, hitting the knight. Knight goes to A4. Now, he seems like he's on the side of the board, not doing much good. But later, these squares are going to be really important to get that knight back into action. Knight can go here, back to here. A lot of things. Knight takes, queen takes. Interesting, the computer likes bishop takes f6, then bishop takes, and then queen takes. After queen takes f3, bishop takes, queen h3, b takes h1. Now here's where it starts getting crazy. Black's got a rook for two pawns. Now, what Acopian was thinking, I really don't know, because this is such a complex position. Looking at a bunch of things here. Pawn. Bishop can take here. Rook has to move. Queen takes pawn. A lot of crap going on here. G5, just as I said. Knight to E4. G6. Interesting move. That's also the computer move. G6. Here comes the fun. Here we go. What to do? What to do? Computer likes knight to g5, which is a very interesting move, to say the least. But he goes f6. He went knight to g5 after g takes, king takes. Interesting. Point and a half advantage in that scenario for black, by the way. But after f6... It's almost back down to zero. Tiny advantage for white. And you got to remember now, if we go to keep score here, black has a rook and two pawns for a knight. That's how strong this attack is. Queen to e6. Trapping the king. King can't castle now. As we all know, king can't castle through check or into check. And the queen's guarding that spot. Knight to g5, hitting the queen. Not h takes, because after rook d1, queen c7, rook takes, bishop takes, queen takes. And the way that scenario works out is three pieces for two rooks and two pawns, and it's still basically a drawn game. <laughs> Go figure. Knight to g5. Queen goes back to e3. h finally takes. Knight brings six. Bring in the other pieces. Start guarding some squares. This square, this square, this square. Eventually this knight is going to hopefully get in here and cause all kinds of havoc. Bishop's going to get in the game. All the white's pieces are in play. Both of black's rooks are just sitting there. Rook to a7 just to guard that key spot. If rook had taken h2, bishop d3, rook a7, knight c5, pawn takes, bishop takes check, king f8. Wow, wow, wow. And that's going to be similar to what comes up, you'll see. After rook to a7, bishop d3, threatening, of course, taking the pawn with check. Rook takes h2. It looks like white has all this kind of attack, but it's really black that has the advantage. Not just the material. He's finally getting his pieces into play. Now this rook's a little loose out here. Bishop takes check. King to f8. 
Now, this interesting move. The computer likes rook to g1. And second choice, and very close second choice, is knight to c5. And that's what white does. Knight to c5. For those of you that are wondering, bishop to c6, excuse me. Those of you that are wondering instead, if queen had taken the knight, knight checks, king, knight takes, and of course, that's it. Black is doomed. After bishop c6, knight e6 check, knight has to take, queen takes, bishop e8. It looks like black's getting smothered by white's pieces, but it's really black that has an advantage, according to the computer. Remember, he's up the exchange in two pawns. If he can hang on, black can win this game. And this is where I think things start to go wrong for a copian. Bishop d3, rook c7. This is where he makes a mistake. Bishop e4 was a good move, and I like that move myself. He decides to make a very, a very natural move. Rook to e1, and bang, just like that. Black's almost two, up two and a half pawns. He was looking at rook here and knight here. That's what it looks like to me. Perfectly legitimate. But unfortunately, that's going to cost him, I think. Now, Anish makes a bad move, too. I don't know if they were in time trouble or not. This is move 30. Queen to b7 is the computer's choice, and I like that a lot, too. Queen to b7, in case this rook moves. White's in trouble in his back rank. He goes rooked, excuse me, queen to d8. And almost the entire advantage now is gone for black. With well, a computer like it was queen to b7, and after bishop b4, bishop f7. And black, or black is more than fine here. In fact, he's doing very well. After rook to d8, it's almost an even game. Got to remember, he's up two pawns in the exchange, and he only has a half a point advantage to score now. Queen e4, knight to d5. He decides knight to d5, which is the natural move, which is, I think it was the move he was thinking of when he moved the rook to e1. Bishop f7. What to do, what to do? You've got to move the queen to e4. You've got to guard the knight. Rook to d7. And almost all of black's advantage is gone now. If he had gone f5 instead, after queen f3, bishop takes, queen takes, bishop f6, queen takes, rook d7. Tiny advantage for black. But after rook d7, white makes his fatal mistake. And it looks like such a natural move. Who wouldn't make it, honestly? And that's knight to f4. And now the advantage is almost three points for black. d5. Knight checks. Bishop takes. Queen takes. Rook h6. He's up to exchange in two pawn, and basically the attack is gone. What attack does white have now? It's basically gone. Queen to g2. Bishop d6, rook g1, rook h4, getting aggressive. Computer like queen e7 for black with an over three point advantage. Rook to h4, that might have been in time trouble. We're on move 37 now. And this is where. White stumbles again, and I think it's a very natural move. Very natural move. Queen takes d5, and it's an over four-point advantage now for white. Bishop f2 would have been better, and after rook moves, queen f3. It's still an advantage for black, but not nearly as much. After queen takes d5, bishop e7. Queen to g2, going after... Here, threatening mate next move. Rook takes anyway. Queen takes, king e8. Now that rook moved is the escape square for the king. Queen checks. 
King d7, f5 check. King c7, check by the queen on e5, trade queen, excuse me, queen takes a6, rook to d6, and I'll just tell you, white's, white's just doomed now. I think he's just playing this out for, it's emotional, you don't want to resign. You thought you had a good game. Queen a4, queen b6, rook e1, rook g4. You can't take the bishop because it's mate. b3, fairly makes some air for his king. Rook g1, he doesn't want to trade the rook. He's still hanging on. Rook d8, a3. He was playing so well in the tournament, too, a Copian. King a2. Queen c5. Now they're just maneuvering around. It's over a six-point advantage for black. He's just lost. A takes. Queen takes. Queen a6. Can't trade queens. Rook g5. King b2. Rook a5. And that's where a Copian resigns. Give you an idea after rook a5, queen has to take the rook, and queen takes, and that's the end of that. Anyway, folks, that's a hell of a game from round 9. Another game from round 9 coming up, the big game between Vladimir Kramnik and Wangi Yu, I believe it's pronounced. That's a hell of a game as well. Anyway, folks, as I always say, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.